You know, the English language is kind of an interesting thing, or at least what we turned it into. I often think about how little sense some phrases and terms mean, such as when people use the word ass to describe how bad something is. It's always just kind of confused me, like, isn't ass good? Doesn't everyone like ass? It wasn't until I played Mass Effect Andromeda, however, that I finally understood the idea of calling something ass. It's supposed to be smooth and soft and easy on the eyes. Hello there. It's supposed to be a good thing, but this isn't the kind of supple, squeaky clean ass that we all yearn for. It's the unwashed, unkempt, greasy ass that we avoid like the plague. Okay, in all honesty, Mass Effect Andromeda isn't that bad. I just wanted a funny intro to make you a little uncomfortable. I had only recently played through the original Mass Effect trilogy, and I've gotta say, my only regret is that I didn't play it earlier. Also, Mass Effect 3's ending f***ing sucks. These games came to me at the absolute perfect time. They're just so full of life and energy and have their own unique art styles and the worlds and characters they introduce feel so genuine and real. Not to mention that the gameplay is downright addicting, and although some of the games made some changes I don't necessarily agree with, Mass Effect 1 and 2 are gonna go down in my books as some of the greatest games of all time. Do you want to sit back and explore vast new worlds and be sucked into this game's suffocating atmosphere because your weed-stained apartment in the middle of a war zone is starting to get to your head? You can do that. Want a strategic, fast-paced, and satisfying shooter that allows you to experiment with a wide variety of abilities because getting killed by 9-year-olds with the same exact gun over and over is starting to get a little grating, you can get exactly that. Want a group of people that all have interesting and lovable personalities that you can spend all your time around because everyone else you know and meet in real life are materialistic, dysfunctional weirdos? Hell, you can even get that. Uh, I don't think Tali is gonna harass me because I didn't like season three of The Boys. Also, Jack can sit on my face. And unfortunately, the adventure doesn't end there. Long before I even thought about playing the Mass Effect games, I was already well aware of the reputation that Andromeda had. Its facial animations are bad. I guess. That, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I remember from the controversy surrounding it. And also something about someone on Bioware, like, hating men or something. I don't know. Go watch the Act Man video. Unlike series like Halo or other various games that were completely ruined by new studios coming in to f*** everything up, Mass Effect Andromeda was made by the same people that made the original trilogy in the first place. Bioware. So... Is Mass Effect Andromeda really as bad as people said it was? Well, who knows? Maybe it's not so bad after all. Back at it like a crack at it. In my humble opinion, I think Andromeda's premise is pretty appealing for a number of reasons. It's relatively low consequence and easygoing instead of You are the most important person in the galaxy, Commander Shepard. If you fail, we are all going to die. And that's something I can really appreciate. Literally, the entire point of this game is that you're going to just explore uncharted worlds in the Andromeda galaxy, which is a real galaxy, by the way. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Even though 10 seconds ago I said that this this game being lightweight in terms of importance was a good thing, I will now pull a complete 180 and say the exact opposite. The game's plot is extremely lightweight, thus it's boring and doesn't give me a lot to care about. Oh silly me, this game does have consequence. How could I possibly forget about the cat? The most boring alien race I've ever seen that has the most predictable plot twist of all time. The Ket are basically just these big dumb rock guys that are trying to understand some type of alien technology called remnant technology, and they just generally like making things more difficult for you. You could tell me all day long about how deep and detailed their backstories are and how they're the most well-written antagonists in history, even though they're not, and I wouldn't be able to get a quarter of the way through the conversation because they look like this. They just they look dumb. Now you might be saying, isn't that like judging a book by its cover? And my answer? Yes. Make a more enticing cover. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I'm gonna level with you for a second. I do not remember more than three things about the plot of this game off the top of my head because it was so boring and full of stupid quips and sarcastic characters and mindless gameplay that I just don't remember a fucking thing. This game's snarky, quippy characters, its flashy art style, its empty feeling pseudo open worlds, its fast paced, nothing like the original gameplay all combined into this empty feeling game that's less Mass Effect and more like Destiny. 
That is not a compliment. Mass Effect 1. There's a guy named Saren summoning ancient machines that reset the universe every thousand years and you need to stop them. Mass Effect 2. You work for an organization that has questionable morals but put aside your differences to hunt down a new alien species. Mass Effect 3. The final fight between you and the ancient machines. Mass Effect Andromeda. You go to a new galaxy to find Earth 2 and the, the Ket don't want you to do it or something. Also, you have a sister that you probably don't care about. Also, all the Asari have the same fucking face. The game starts off in some big ship and then some weird energy attacks it that knocks your sibling that you don't care about into a coma. Then you and your dad that you don't care about go onto this planet. On the other side of the big weird energy wall that blew your ship up, you get a hang of the game's awful combat and meet dumb dumb alien rock people that look like toys. And then you turn Turn off some machine that's making a storm and then the dad you only speak to for a maximum of 15 minutes dies to save you and then you get some dumb AI called Sam with a really boring monotone voice that serves no other purpose in this entire game than to say shit that doesn't matter and open big dumb shiny doors. One thing leads to another and the main character, named Ryder by the way, I forgot to mention that, ends up settling down on some desert world and establishing the first area of hospitality for the human and alien races. And then after that, the big stupid rock guys find you or something, and then you land on this planet called Aya, where you're introduced to the species called the Angara, and they look f***ing terrible. Say what you want about them, but for me, they don't look like anything from Mass Effect. They look too cutesy, weird. They like vaguely look like the, the blue guys from Avatar. I don't know. I can't, I can't really put it into words what it is about them. They just look so strange to me. And they also look kind of similar to the Ket. Huh. I wonder, I wonder if that has any, any plot significance there. So then to gain their trust, you go to some snow planet with nothing interesting to do, and then something, something happens, then you go to another planet, then there's some neon jungle, which sounds cool, but since it's Mass Effect Andromeda, it's just boring and samey, and you very quickly just want to get this shit over with and leave. So the Angara are actually getting ready to fight back against the Ket, which is why you're helping them, and in turn, need help from them. Another thing I forgot to mention was this thing called the Meridian, which is this item that can control these things called vaults on every planet that essentially just controls the climate and atmosphere, which just sounds so exciting, doesn't it? That I'm sure will be perfectly safe and won't have a certain someone trying to look for it. Oh no, the cat are actually Angara and they're being led by some religious zealot that's seeking to take the Angara and then turn them into the cat for, uh, for some thing that I don't remember and there's a wizard or something. So then Ryder goes to where the Meridian supposedly is but it turns out that it's an ancient remnant city and while Ryder and the gang are here the bad guy Rock Dumb Leader launches an attack on the main ship where the stupid sister is and then she fights them or something in a bit which is admittedly pretty cool being able to play as another character and then she's captured and the bad guy leader takes the AI out of your head or something and uses it and hit your sister and he plans on he's gonna use it to the ending of the game is kinda cool, I guess, probably because it's the only part of the game that feels like something is happening. You have all the other alien fleets and ships that you've been working with throughout the entire game launch an attack on this world that the bad guy is using as a weapon or hiding in or something, I don't really remember. What I do remember, however, is that the ending doesn't change. Like at all. Remember how in the older Mass Effect games you could have different potential endings based on the choices you made, or how in Mass Effect 3 you had to do certain side quests and make certain choices that would add more forces to the army you'd need to build for the final battle against the Reapers? You remember how cool and detailed and real those felt? How it felt like the things you did had real consequences and there was some sort of sacrifice and thought? Well in Mass Effect Andromeda, you get literally none of that. Because the game is extremely boring for reasons I'll list in a minute, it was extremely difficult for me to do literally any side missions in this game at all. I did like maybe three, and this is coming from someone that tried to complete literally every side quest in the other games. But halfway through the game, I purposely didn't do any side quests at all that didn't have to do with romance in Korra, because I was positive it wouldn't change anything if I did. And I was right, it didn't. Why does this game have the words Mass Effect in the title again? So whoop 
to fucking do. You beat the bad guy in some big, stupid, shiny explosion fight or something, and then you save your sister, and then a uh, the end. I'm well aware that the amount of effort and detail I put into this plot summary is nowhere near what I usually do, and I have a reason for that. There's just not a lot about this game I can talk about. It doesn't feel passionate or particularly special. It's just such a boring game. Its plot is lighthearted and doesn't feel like it has any real weight, and that kind of sucks. The type of gameplay and the type of story that Mass Effect has attached to it doesn't serve this type of story or game very well at all. Maybe if this game was only focused on trying to be a game based on exploration, it'd be better, instead of trying to be about exploration and crafting, with also some type of intersecting Mass Effect story with decisions and characters to look after in there too. And all of this might sound dumb or empty, and you may be right. If I'm gonna be two times honest with you, I'm not necessarily entirely sure why I even dislike this game as much as I do. The second I picked up this game and started playing it, I just immediately didn't want to play it anymore. The split second I touched down onto that first alien planet, I just felt bored out of my mind. Maybe it's the voice acting, maybe it's the art style change, maybe it's because everything looks so shiny and glows and looks like any other typical 2016 sci-fi game. Maybe it's the music, maybe it's the... Oh. Yeah, that's probably what it is. The original Mass Effect games were cover-based strategic shooters. I've never played the XCOM games, but it's kind of like those except you directly control your character. I think. The gameplay of those games were downright addicting. You could upgrade the two characters you decide to take with you, choose their weaponry, unlock new skills, and command them directly on when and where to use said skills and abilities. There was no jumping, only cover-based combat. The combat and movement, while feeling a little clunky at points, was very snappy and easy to understand. It didn't feel like there was one mechanic that didn't need to be there. Andromeda's gameplay is so f***ing different from Mass Effect, it's basically the Halo 5 of the Mass Effect series. Sure, the gameplay isn't bad in general, it's just bad for Mass Effect, is a sound enough sentiment, I think, even if it is extremely overplayed. You can jump because the game incentivizes exploration more. You can dash like f***ing Doom because the game is more fast-paced and explosive. The running and walking animations are far more procedurally generated than they were in the originals, and while I love procedurally generated animations, I don't know, something about it is just really satisfying to me, again, it's not Mass Effect. Here's an argument I see in the Halo community a lot, so I'll acknowledge it here just in case I see it. When someone talks about how Halo 5's gameplay is literally nothing like any other Halo game, the response is always, Oh, so just because it's not Halo 3 means it's bad, huh? Yes. Yes, that is what that means. I don't know if you're aware of this, but games typically have a style of playing. Titanfall 2 is a fast-paced first-person shooter. You can run up walls and slide on the ground and call in giant robots, so if Titanfall 3 played like Dark Souls or something, we probably wouldn't really like that, would we? Sure, that's an exaggeration, but I'm sure you understand where I'm going with this. Does every single style of gameplay in a series have to stay exactly the same? No, of course not. Sometimes Sometimes developers have to change things up just a little bit to keep it fresh, but there is such thing as straying too far away from what it's supposed to be. What do you mean what it's supposed to be? Why can't it do something different? Because it made a style, so it has to stick with that style. And yes, I understand that Mass Effect Andromeda is a spin-off game, but again, why does it try to do all these things that the original Mass Effect games do if it's just going to be so completely different? Honestly, if this game would just ditch the stupid story and be something like Minecraft or Subnautica where it's literally just exploration and survival, maybe I'd enjoy it more because it would feel like its own spin-off instead of some undead amalgamation of two different playstyles. And you can't even command your teammates? What the f***? That was literally some of the most fun parts of the Mass Effect games, unlocking new abilities for your friends and teammates and seeing what they could do in the battlefield, but in this, you can't control them at all. They just run off and do their own thing. It's, it's possible that I accidentally changed something before I started the game, but I doubt I did. If this game even has an option to make teammates attack automatically, it just makes me not give a shit about their abilities because 9 times out of 10, I'm not going to be looking at them at all and just trying to either go shoot something else or shoot at the same thing 
thing they're shooting at. I've been doing nothing but shitting on this game for the past however many minutes, so what are some things this game does right in the gameplay department? Well, if you count performance as gameplay, and I do, the game performs really, really well. I had almost all of my graphic settings maxed out, and this game ran at a solid 120 to 144 frames the entire time. Even when I had OBS running and when I was out in open areas, frames didn't drop at all. Frames rarely dropped. And this wouldn't be that impressive if a lot of the environmental graphics didn't look so good, because they do most of the time. All the reflective and shiny interiors and the more natural environments looked really good most of the time, but the character models and textures... <laughs> Uh, don't. Look at this awful looking beard on my character. It looks so weird. It's like a bunch of microscopic cocoa puffs and I fucking hate it. Don't even get me started on the fucking terrible lighting and how it makes all the hair in this game look like plastic. Not to mention that the character customization itself sucks too. I know that the original Mass Effect games character customization wasn't exactly the most in-depth thing ever, but this could have been their chance to do that. In the original Mass Effect games, you could choose the, the color of your skin skin and your separate eyebrows and stuff like that, but in this, your eyebrows and the entire structure of your face and its complexion is tied to one thing. So if you see a certain pair of eyebrows you like, but it's attached to white skin and you want your character to be something that's not white, well, guess you're gonna have to go find another pair of eyebrows then. Even when I'm trying to compliment this game, it eventually just turns into an insult. I guess I should probably say that the gameplay on its own, at its most basic form, isn't bad. There were several points in the game, most of the time really, where it was the type of game that you can just sit back and mindlessly play. It's like a Marvel movie. Actually, wait, that's a perfect analogy. This game's gameplay is like a Marvel movie. It's shiny and colorful and looks good enough, but it's not something you're gonna wanna come to for some kind of lasting impact or intellectual challenge. You just sit back, turn your brain off, and let the punchy gun sound effects echo throughout your mind. Again, it's just like Destiny. But it's not Mass Effect, so I'm still confused as to why. Another thing I really hate is how you can access literally any ability across any class and subclass any time you want. You can even change entire classes whenever you want because who needs experimenting with different classes and seeing what works best and having some type of concrete acknowledgement of the type of character you're playing as and dedication to your decision when you can literally just be anything. That's why Mass Effect 2 is so good to me. You choose a class, your weapons and abilities are limited to what that class can do and wield. It feels like the decision you made is more important and concrete instead of just being able to be whatever you want whenever you want. How can I think my character is interesting when he could do literally anything. Better yet, what use do my teammates have if I can just do whatever they can do whenever I want? It's not even a matter of having big shoes to fill, it's just that they didn't even stick with the formula at all. And again, that's perfectly fine. Spinoffs are allowed to exist, but like I said earlier, Andromeda isn't one extreme playstyle that's a world's difference from the original trilogy. It's a weird zombie that's like half old sh and half new sh so it's just in this weird middle ground because it wants to be something different but still keeps a lot of properties of the originals. The armor customization is nice, I guess. Being able to change the light colors would have been cool, but that's fine, I guess. You know, you know what? You know, no. I wrote down in this script that the armor customization is good. F that. Honestly, f*** that. The armor customization in this game is not good at all. Or maybe less of the customization wasn't bad, it's just that the armor you're given sucks. Almost every single set of armor in this game looks identical. It's like Halo 5 armor where like its design sort of looks different, but every single piece of armor has like the same function like shit on it. Like, y you know, like uh, n no matter what the armor looks like, it's always gonna like be in the shape of a tank top and have like dumb thrusters on the back and it sucks. The way your guns match the color of your armor is kinda cool, at, at least I think they do, and if not, then that's a really weird coincidence, though I'd rather just be able to customize their colors separately because what if I don't want them to match my armor? What if what if I think that's a little tacky? The music is kinda decent at certain points, I guess, though now that I think about it, a lot of the times it just sounds extremely generic and straight up bad, especially on the main menu. I think that's pretty much all I can think of in the gameplay department, if I didn't mention it, I'm probably okay with it. Maybe don't hold me to my word on that one. But now let's get into the second biggest reason why I really don't like this game. I'm over here stroking my 
Remember earlier when I said that this game was kinda like a Marvel movie and also Destiny 2? Keep that in mind. Let's take some time to talk about the wide variety of characters in this game. There's Korra, who's this human lady that was trained with the Asari to be a commando, which is kinda cool I suppose, and the mission you do for her loyalty was one of the few missions in this game I was actually interested in. She's kinda snooty and rude at first because your dad made you the leader of this entire interplanetary mission instead of her for some reason, but the more time you spend around her, the more she warms up to you, and even though she's my favorite character in the game, which isn't really saying a lot because she's not even close to the depth and realism of any character from the original trilogy, she's... Uh, decent. PB. You heard that correctly, her name is f***ing PB. Her character is a perfect reflection of one of my biggest issues with this game and its writing. She's just a typical, funny, sarcastic, dumb f character that every Tumblr user wishes they could be. I know that making fun of Tumblr users isn't exactly in style, but I don't give a sh if the shoe fits. There's not really a lot I can say about her. I didn't really put any effort into exploring her character because, well, like the entire rest of the cast, she just felt boring. She just makes dumb quips all the time that aren't funny. You could say I'm judging a book by its cover again, and you'd be right again. Make a better cover. I quite literally know nothing about Liam Costa because I never said a word to him. He looks kind of like Childish Gambino and makes dumb quips every once in a while. Vetra Nix is a female Turian who sure is cool because it's a female Turian that for some reason never existed until this game, is still just boring because she does nothing but make dumb quips every once in a while. Also, why the f would I romance a Turi? Jal is one of the few new fangled aliens that I already said looks stupid. He's fine, I guess. The only reason I dug into his character more than others is because I accidentally walked into the room he was in which started a conversation. He's kind of like this fish out of water, which sure, may have been interesting, but as I said, boring. And finally, there's Nakmore Drac, who is so f***ing boring and uninteresting that I never even looked in his general direction once. With Mass Effect 1 and 2, the cast of characters was infinitely more interesting than any of these guys. Not only in design and backstory, but just their physical designs in general. Sure, not every single character from those games was super interesting, but after talking to them, I at least cared about them. And even if I didn't, Mass Effect 2 gives you a reason to interact with your crewmates to gain their loyalty so they don't die at the end of the game. This game doesn't even seem to care about its own characters, so why should I? This would have been the part of the video where I say something about the characters being the centerpiece of the game, and in a way it is, and the characters of a Mass Effect game also are one of my most favorite aspects. They're the people that surround you and are gonna be with you throughout the entirety of your journey, but I'd argue that the thing that just f***s this game up is its weird, flashy, loose gameplay. I don't even know how to explain it, and I, I already talked about that so I'm not gonna say much more, but I cannot stress enough how weird and strange and just uncharacteristic to the franchise this game's gameplay is. I guess... I guess that's it, really. I don't really know how to end this video, which is appropriate because I don't really understand Mass Effect Andromeda as an experience. It says Mass Effect in the title. Sure, it's got some neat little characters in there, and it has the weapons and aliens we all know and love and recognize, but the gameplay is just way too jumpy and flashy, and the game doesn't know if it wants to be a mineral mining exploration game or a backflip explosion field jump shooter like Destiny. When I completed the main story of this game, I had had zero drive to do anything else in it. If I'm having a slow day or just for some reason feel like being tortured, I may in some reality, in some timeline, open up my Steam, navigate to this game, install it, boot it up and play it. But as it stands now and probably an extremely long time, it will stay uninstalled and left to rot in my library.